Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Swuss. Uh, Tuesday College Basketball, March Madness is officially starting. Uh, got the ACC tournament starting, got the Big 12 tournament starting. I'm going to go through four games. Whatever I don't get to, though, we will go through on the live show tomorrow morning, 11 a.m. Eastern time. There's a lot of day games, so we're going to uh, do the college basketball show in the morning. That'll be at 11 a.m. If you're able to make it, we'd love to see you in the comments. So, yeah, I'm going to go through four games. Let's go. Welcome to The Swiss. Get this to us. First up, we got Oklahoma State UCF. This is the Big 12 tournament. It's taking place in Kansas City. Uh, so a neutral site game. Obviously, they're all going to be. Uh, we got Central Florida laying four points here. The total sitting at 136 and a half. Betting trends on the Oklahoma State side. One and two against the spread on neutral site this year. So one and two against the number in these neutral site games. Seven and 11 against the spread in conference play. But here's the big one. Five straight losses against the number for Oklahoma State. 0-5 straight up, 0-5 against the spread in their last five. On the UCF side, 0-2 against the spread at neutral sites this year. Uh, they are, however, 12-6 against the spread in Big 12 play, and they're 4-1 against the spread coming into uh, in their last five. So UCF coming into March Madness with, with some momentum. Oklahoma State most definitely not. Recent production from these two teams obviously points towards UCF. Uh, Central Florida four and six in their last 10 games with the 11th strongest schedule in that span. Uh, they're two and three on the road in that span. Obviously, this isn't a true road game, but two and three on the road. Uh, Oklahoma State three and seven in their last 10 with the fourth strongest schedule. So let's give Oklahoma State a little bit of credit. They've played a strong schedule, but just three and seven and one and four on the road in that span. Before we get into this one, we need to mention that these two teams already played. In fact, recently, it's like two weeks, less than two weeks ago, uh, Oklahoma State went on the road to Central Florida. Final score was 77-71 UCF. So Oklahoma State played them pretty close. So let's start with the match of our Oklahoma State's offense. And you got to give the edge to UCF's defense on this side. Uh, Oklahoma State should get plenty of trips to the free throw line. You can see huge discrepancy there in free throw rate. 27th to 345th in the last 10. But they're going to have problems holding on to the basketball. UCF should be able to force plenty of turnovers. And shot making, the most important part of basketball, 70th to 179th in the last that. Bad news for Oklahoma State's offense when we pull up some shot zones here. A big part of Oklahoma State's offense is scoring on the interior. Uh, you can see shot frequency numbers in the last 10 games. 167 at the rim, 97th in the paint. Uh, and they're pretty good down there. It's the best part of their offense. Well, UCF actually has strong defensive numbers down there. 49th against that short mid-range shot in the paint. 136th at the rim. So overall, this is a really tough matchup for Oklahoma State offensively. On the other side of the court, we got UCF's offense. And I'd give the edge to Central Florida on this side as well. Not that UCF's offense has been any good. It's just that Oklahoma State's defense is just really terrible. Uh, look at the rebounding numbers on this side. 112th to 350th. Uh, so UCF should get plenty of second chance opportunities in this one. And if we pull up shot zones, we can take a look at the mid-range shooting numbers. Uh, UCF takes a lot of shots from these two zones. 85th in frequency in the paint, 104th in frequency from the long mid-range. So this is a big part of their offense. Uh, Oklahoma State's defensive numbers against those two shots, 304th and 249th. So UCF should be able to have a successful day offensively. As far as betting this game, it honestly pains me to do it because at the end of January there, heading into early February, Oklahoma State got a little hot there. They had a nice little stretch. They were playing teams tough. They won a few games. And I remember saying, if you watch the live show, you probably hear me say it, yo, Oklahoma State in March, we're going to be betting the money line on this team. But they just seem to have mailed it in five straight losses the last three were double digit losses they are just getting rocked recently so at a short line like three and a half four there's just no way i can get there with oklahoma state give me central florida in this one next game georgia tech against the irish this is the acc tournaments being held in washington dc this year uh notre dame laying a point and a half in this one in the total sitting at 143 and a half betting trends on the georgia tech side we'll start with the neutral site games Two and one against the spread in those for Georgia Tech. 10 and 10 against the spread in conference play. Three and two against the spread in their last five. On the Notre Dame side, we got one and one against the spread in neutral sites this year. 
13 and 7 against the spread in ACC play, 4 and 1 against the spread in their last five. Recent production for these two teams definitely points towards Notre Dame here. In the last 10 games, they're 5 and 5. Georgia Tech just 4 and 6. And look at the strength of schedule 51st for Notre Dame, 110th for Georgia Tech. Uh, so Notre Dame not only has a better record than Georgia Tech recently, but they played a stronger schedule as well. Before we get into this one, we need to take note that these two teams have played twice already this year. January 9th at Georgia Tech, Notre Dame went on the road and beat them. Final score was 75-68. And then on February 14th, they played again. This one was at Notre Dame in South Bend. Well, I think it's in South Bend. The football team's in South Bend. Uh, final score of that one was 58-55 Notre Dame. So Notre Dame took both meetings this year, both one home and one away. So let's start with the matchup for Georgia Tech's offense and got to give the edge to Notre Dame defensively here. But that's only because Georgia Tech's offensive numbers might be the worst things I've ever seen. 316th in the FG, 310th in turnover rate, 324th in free throw rate. And I mean, look at the, the rankings on Notre Dame's side. It's not like Notre Dame's defense has been any good. Georgia Tech's offense is just next level bad. Shot zones for Georgia Tech's offense, I mean, not really anything here. We can pull up the above the break three numbers. Georgia Tech, I guess, has somewhat of a three-point shooting presence. They're 129th in efficiency in their last 10 from out there. Uh, Notre Dame defensively 105th in efficiency, 230th in frequency. So, I mean, I guess Georgia Tech should get some looks from outside, but really not much here. On the other side of the court, we got Notre Dame's offense and huge edge for Georgia Tech here. I mean, EFG. Look at the rebounding uh, discrepancy here. 28th to 252nd. On paper, Notre Dame should get zero second chance opportunities, and they're going to have a lot of trouble knocking down shots here. Uh, look at the free throw rate too, 92nd to 292nd. So, so as much credit as I was giving Notre Dame's defense in their matchup against Georgia Tech's offense, on this side, it's all Georgia Tech's defense. And again, we got to pull up the above the break three numbers because Notre Dame takes a ton of them. In the last 10 games, Notre Dame's 67th in shot frequency from out there. So the three-point shot's been a big part of their offense. Look at Georgia Tech's defense, 137th against the above the break three. I like this matchup for Georgia Tech's defense, and I like how Notre Dame's beat them twice. It's difficult to beat a team three times in one year. I think it's going to be a low-scoring defensive battle. Obviously, odds makers agree with that. The total's at 131. Uh, I'm going to go with Georgia Tech here, or the under. Georgia Tech or the under, I'll say. I didn't bet this one yet. I want to see what the guys say on the live show first, but... I'm saying I'm, I'm leaning Georgia Tech and under next game. West Virginia, Cincinnati. We're back in the Big 12, so we're back in Kansas City for this one. Uh, Bearcats laying nine and a half points here. Total sent at 148 and a half. Betting trends on the West Virginia side. Uh, neutral site games this year. They're two and two against the spread. Just six and 12 against the spread in conference play. Two and three against the spread in their last five. On the Cincinnati side, they've only played one neutral site game this entire year, and they're 0-1 against the spread uh, in those in that one, I should say. Uh, they're 11 and seven against the spread in Big 12 play, three and two against the spread in their last five overall. Recent production from these two teams obviously points towards Cincinnati. I mean, West Virginia, just one and nine in their last 10 games, 0 and five on the road in that span. Uh, they have played the ninth strongest schedule in the last 10, so let's give them a little bit of credit, but Cincinnati's 10th, so they played an equally strong schedule, and they're four and six in their last 10. Before we get into this one, we need to take a look at the head-to-head -head matchups. These two teams have played twice already this year. West Virginia actually beat Cincinnati. That was back on January 31st at home in Morgantown. Final score was 69-65, but then they just played again last Saturday in Cincinnati. Cincinnati beat the life out of these people. Final score was 92-56 in that game. So we'll start with the matchup for West Virginia's offense. And I guess I'll give the edge to Cincinnati's defense on this side, but it's not overwhelming. I mean, EFG 90th to 139th. Uh, you can see Cincinnati should be able to force turnovers. That's really the deciding factor here. West Virginia really struggling to protect the basketball. 342nd in turnover rate in the last 10. Cincinnati's defense 117th. Shot zones for the WV offense. And again, we're going right back to those above the break threes west virginia another offense that relies on the three-point shot in the last 10 games they're 128th in frequency from out there 94th in efficiency so west virginia is surprisingly a pretty good three-point shooting team from out there uh that being said cincinnati's defense 40th in frequency so they don't even allow their opponents to get attempts from out there and when they do they're still 144th in efficiency so cincinnati's been a solid three-point defense i like this matchup for the bearcats defense on the other side of the court we got the cincinnati offense and i definitely give the edge to cincinnati on this side not that Cincinnati's offensive numbers look great, but 
Look at those rebounding numbers. 11th to 248th. Cincinnati should have all the second chance opportunities they want in this game, even if their shots aren't falling, which they probably will against this bad West Virginia defense. But even when they're not falling, they should get offensive rebounds to put the next one in. Shot zones on this side. Uh, Cincinnati, a pretty balanced offensive team, but we can look at the rim. They're 111th in frequency down there, so they attack the basket a decent amount. Uh, West Virginia defensively at the basket. 297th and while we're talking about shot zones we might as well also take a look at the mid-range numbers here Cincinnati's mid-range shooting I mean 162nd in frequency 33rd in efficiency so it's not a huge part of their offense but look at look at West Virginia's defensive numbers from that zone 359th so literally one of the worst mid-range shooting defenses in the country recently uh, look I don't love the idea of laying nine and a half points in these conference tournament games but based on the production we've seen on the court recently West Virginia should get completely smoked again in this one, just like they did Saturday. So I got to go Cincinnati here. I don't love it because laying nine and a half points in these games is, is always comes with a bit of risk, but I'm on Cincinnati or pass here next game. Back in the ACC, which means we're back in Washington, D.C. for this one. Louisville, North Carolina State. NC State laying nine and a half points in this one. That just shows you how bad Louisville's been because NC State hasn't even been playing well. Uh, total sitting at 148 and a half for this one. Betting trends on the Louisville side. We'll start with those neutral site games. 2-0 against the spread uh, on neutral sites this year. So, okay, Louisville, I see you, Cardinals. 8-11-1 uh, against the spread in ACC play this year. But here's the big one. Five losses in a row against the number. 0-5 against the spread in their last five. On the North Carolina side, they're just 1-2 against the spread in the neutral site games this year. 8-11-1 against the spread in conference play. 2-3 against the spread in their last five. Recent production from these two teams definitely points towards North Carolina State here. Uh, Louisville 2-8 in their last 10 games. 0-4 on the road in that span. North Carolina State 3-7 in their last 10. 1-4 on the road in that span. But look at the strength of schedule numbers. 24th to 115th. So North Carolina with a slightly better record with a much stronger schedule. Before we get into this one, we need to point out that these two teams played already. It was all the way back on January 13th. So we're talking about two months ago now, uh, but Louisville played them tough. They went on the road to North Carolina State. Final score was 89-83. So we'll start out with the matchup for Louisville offensively. And based on these numbers, you got to give the edge to Louisville on this side. But keep in mind, all these numbers need to be taken with a grain of salt because we're dealing with a serious strength of schedule discrepancy. Remember, in the last 10 games, North Carolina State State's playing a much stronger schedule um, than Louisville has. So you look at these numbers. If you skew it using the strength of schedule, you would have to say the edge goes to North Carolina State's defense on this side. Not much to go by as far as shot charts for Louisville's offense. Uh, we can take a look at the mid-range shooting. They're 106 in frequency, 66 in efficiency. Now, the long mid-range shot isn't a huge part of these offenses, uh, especially just 106 in frequency. But North Carolina State has really struggled against that shot. 252nd to 247th. I mean, I, this isn't that serious of an angle here, but... When we're talking about Louisville's offense, you really got to search to find them. On the other side, we got NC State's offense, and the Wolfpack have the edge in every single category here. Actually, rebounding goes to Louisville, but when you take into consideration the strength of schedule, definite edge for North Carolina State offensively in this matchup. Shot charts for NC State's offense. Let's look at the mid-range shooting because NC State takes a ton of them, and I mean a ton of mid-range shots. From the short mid-range in the last 10 games, they're 12th in frequency. Long mid-range, 55th in frequency. So the mid-range shot, a huge huge part of North Carolina State's offense. Look at Louisville's defensive numbers against those two zones in the last 10 games, 216th and 268th. So definitely a, a favorable matchup for NC State. We know North Carolina State's the better team here. That's not even a question. I just don't like this team enough to lay nine and a half points here. I like the matchup in Cincinnati a lot better than here. So I'd actually lean Louisville in this one. I'd consider taking the points. I might actually do it. I'll let you know on the live show, but I'm leaning Louisville plus nine and a half next game. Sticking with the ACC, we got Miami Boston College. Boston College gets one and a half points here. Total sitting at 147 betting trends on the miami side and we'll start with the neutral site games two and one against the spread on those this year seven eleven and two against the spread in conference play miami's one and four against the number in their last five on the boston college side one and two against the spread uh, at neutral sites this year just seven and 13 against the spread in conference play two and three against the spread in their last five overall so neither team has good looking trends here recent production from these two teams points towards boston college bc four and six in their last 10 games two and three on the road in that span meanwhile miami just one and nine in their last 10 0 and five on the road but look at the strength of schedule this is a serious discrepancy here 26th for miami 
133 for Boston College. So when we're using numbers from the last 10 games, like we're about to, we got to keep in mind that Miami's played the much stronger schedule than Boston College has. Before we get into this one, we need to take note that these two teams have met twice already this season. On February 17th, they met at Boston College. BC won that game 85-77. And then just last week, they played in Miami. BC won that one as well, 67-57. So Boston College with two wins over Miami. You know, as I said earlier, it's hard to beat a team three times in one season. We'll start with the matchup for Miami offensively. And obviously looking at these numbers, you got to give the edge to Boston College. But keep in mind, like I said earlier, these are numbers from the last 10 games. And Miami's played a significantly stronger schedule. So I actually think Miami's offense should be in a favorable spot here. Uh, despite what these numbers say. And to take it a step further, shot zones for Miami's offense. Let's look at the jump shooting here. Long mid range, Miami, 97th in frequency. Now they haven't been very efficient shooting that shot, but Boston College against that zone, 346th. So Miami's gonna have opportunities to hit some shots. And look at this, above the break three numbers in the last 10 games. 56th in frequency, 139th in efficiency. Miami's got some nice looking three point shooting numbers. Boston College defensively in the last 10 games, 250th in efficiency against that shot. I actually like this matchup for Miami's offense. On the other side of the court, we got the BC offense and the edge definitely goes to Boston College here. But again, these are numbers from the last 10 games. So you have to keep strength of schedule in mind. Uh, but regardless, the edge would still go to Boston College offense either way. It's just not quite as extreme as these numbers indicate. Shot zones for Boston College offense. We're going to look at jump shooting again because uh, Boston College also takes a lot of jump shots. 74th in frequency in the last 10. But look at Miami's defense against that shot. 14th in the country in the last 10 games. So I don't know if the mid-range shot is going to be there for BC. That being said... Look at the above the break three numbers, 94th and 72nd for Boston College in the last 10. They've been doing a very good job shooting the three point shot and Miami's defense has really struggled. 351st in frequency, 341st in efficiency. So Miami's been getting absolutely lit up from three recently, which makes betting this game really difficult because I was definitely on Miami and I'm still on Miami. I'm going to take the Canes in this one. Uh, but those three point shooting numbers that we just looked at at the end for Boston College offensively, they scare me a bit. So give me Miami minus one and a half. It's tough to beat a team three times in one year, and I'm going to roll with the Canes, but I'm, I'm a little bit worried. As I said earlier, live show, 11 a.m. Eastern time. We'll go through all the games. I'll bring on guests. Same thing we always do. If you're able to make it, we'd love to see in the comments. Also, the NBA live show is at 4 p.m. So 11 a.m. and 4 p.m. are the two lives tomorrow. Uh, if you want my top bets for all sports parlays of the day, or you'd like to join our Discord, head over to kylecrims.com. The information is right there on the homepage. Let's have ourselves a good Tuesday. Uh, remember to bet responsibly, and I'll talk to you in the Discord.